It's time for the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. On your radio at AM 940 and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the premier radio feature programs in the state. You're about to roam the region with more guests and content courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. Live from the powerhouse, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. And good morning. Glad to have you with us from the studios of WMIX. From WMIX Sports, this is the Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Busy lineup for you today. We're glad to have you with us. We'll talk to Scott Gamber, head coach of the Mountford and Rams basketball team. Rough way to go last night. Uh, cold second half turned into a 44-36 victory for the Altoff Crusaders. Rams had it were in a good spot at the half and, of course, even led 26-19 after three. But... Uh, end up falling to four and three on the year, one and one in the South Seven Conference. Out top, of course, improved to five and one, and two and zero. Oh. We'll talk with Scott Gamer about that. We'll talk with Super Dave Wagner, of course. He is the head bowling coach, Mount Vernon High School, also out there in New Bowl Lanes, and we'll talk to him about the South Seven Conference tournament that they are hosting today at New Bowl and uh, see what the Rams and Lady Rams chances are, maybe to bring home. Actually, won't have to bring it home; they'll already be home. A, a conference title. Uh, Wade Thomas, the Johnson City Indians, will also join us, as well Mike Denault, head coach of the Trico Pioneers. We'll talk with Russ Gerlock. He is the head coach at Wayne City. We will talk about his team uh, hosting the Conrad Allen Invitational. That actually starts this afternoon. Rick Metcalf, head coach of the Cesar waltonville Lady Devils. His team is undefeated, rolling on to another great start. They will play Hamilton County, another undefeated Black Diamond team today. That game will actually be on WMIX-FM. Online at WMIXSports.com. Our final guest today will be Mount Vernon Lady Rams head basketball coach Jeff Lonnen. Lonnen's team is now 6-1, and one, and they are 2-0 and oh in the South 7th Conference. So a good start for the Lady Rams. We'll talk about their matchup with Centralia. Also talk about their health with Jeff Lonnen coming up here on the Saturday Sports Show. So glad to have you with us. Don't forget, you can always stay up to date with us on WMIXSports.com. And you... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Forgot to turn that off. I don't know if you can hear the choo-choo or not, but I can, and I love it. It's the greatest text message ringtone ever. Uh, anyhow, I was somewhere with that. I don't even know where, where I left off. Lady Rams, good start. Talk about their health. That's all the last thing I remember. Oh, you can stay up to date on WMIXSports.com. We have Facebook and Twitter as well. Also have archives of all of our broadcasts on there. We'll have a WMIX Sports social media question of the week coming up. It's already on Facebook. If you would like to answer, you know what? We might as well just tell you what it is right now. Do we go to po- with positive or negative on positive that? Positive vibes. What is the best quis- Christmas gift? What did you say? I, you Bathing. know what? Leave me, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, what is the best really? Christmas? <laughs> go ahead. Once you start, I'm going to leave I'm you done. guys with a what? present whenever I depart. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you that right now. You've already given us gifts all morning. So yes, I have, it. and I apologize for that. But anyhow, <laughs> what is the greatest or best favorite Christmas gift that you have ever received? And, of course, you can chime in on Facebook and Twitter uh, with that one as well. Actually, just we're getting it on Twitter, I believe, right now and just telling you to go to Facebook, maybe. I don't know. Anyhow, busy Saturday morning. We're glad to have you with us here on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Plenty more to head your way. Again, Scott Gamber will come after our break. We'll get you some scores here in just a moment. Uh, probably look at getting you the scores here in a quick second. Looks like we have the scores ready. All tough. Meet Mount Vernon. Game on FM last night, 44-36. Carbondale over Marion on the road, 72-69. Cokia holds serve in Cokia, beating Centralia, 63-46. A game on the AM side last night, Modern Day beat Woodlawn, 41-25 at the SIU Arena. Waltonville over North Clay. Spartans still undefeated, 61-55. Thompsonville wins at home against Weber Township, 51-28. Christopher wins on the road at Wayne City. 55-36. ZR beat Alvarado, 65-50. Chester over Cesar Valera at home, 65-41. Hamilton County went over, 81-68 over Vianna. Carmine nudged Johnston City, 65-53. El Dorado beat Fairfield, 74-61. That's the Black Diamond. In the River to River, Ohio, Harrisburg over Murphy easily, 74-43. Benton beat Heron in, double, in overtime, 44-42. They trailed in that game, 32-7 at one point. Massac over Frankfurt, 74-52. Mississippi side, Carterville hosts and beats Pinckneyville, 41-33. DuCoin hosts, beat AJ, 56-47. Nashville over Sparta, 48-40. Meridian beat Egyptian, 91-80. That's the 300th win for Jeff Mandrill at Egyptian, doesn't seem, or Meridian. Doesn't seem like he's been there that long. 
Other SEC, Century over to Agola, 86-61. Shawnee beat Crab Orchard, 85-45. GEC last night, Crab Orchard beat Galatia, 65-54. Gallatin County over NCOE, 79-45. Carrier Mills beat Hardin County 49-39. To our east, we don't ever forget about our friends to the east, Mount Carmel lost to Vincennes, Indiana, 71-53. It was Robinson over Cumberland by 50, 74-24. In the Apollo last night, Charleston over Salem, 75-68. Effingham beat Mattoon, 53-39. Mount Zion over Paris, 59-52. Alney over Red Hill, 48-40 as we circumnavigate the Little Illini. Flora over Marshall, 48-45. Newton over Edwards County, 61-40. We'll go north. Altamont beat South Central, 56-42. St. Anthony beat St. Elmo, 55-44. At the arena last night in the game before Woodlawn, Oakville beat Trico, 48-28. Why not? Let's go west. Southwestern Conference. Edwardsville beat West, 81-66. Beast beat East St. Louis, 67-66. Alton beat Granite City, 52-43. Collinsville beat O'Fallon, 59-54. Why not? Mississippi Valley will come down the river. Civic Memorial beat Jerseyville 55-44. Waterloo over Triad 43-34. Highland beat Mascuda 39-21. Let's go into Cahokia Conference. Central over Redbud 66-33. New Athens beat Valmire 61-30. Columbia over Westland 72-30. Steelville over Marissa Coulterville 52-41. Lebanon beat Dupo 60-57. And one little score just out of the area. Alton Marquette beat Madison 56-43. Marquette plays Harrisburg tonight at the arena. And in high school girls, Carterville beat Murphy last night in the first game at SIU 65-35. They got covered everything, did it not? Pretty well. Yep. Yeah. Geographically speaking. Of course, Alton Marquette Harrisburg will be on WEBQ 1240, our sister station, and online at WEBQRadio.com from the Salute second annual, second annual Salute shootout today. At the SIU Arena, two-day affair now. Of course, Woodlawn Modern Day took place there last night. You guys had the call on AM 940, WMIXSports.com. Talk a little bit about that a little bit later here on the Saturday Sports Show. Plenty more to come your way. It's a loaded lineup today with Scott Gamber, Dave Wagner, Wave Thomas, uh, Mike Denault, Russ Gerlach, Rick Metcalf, Jeff Lon, and among others here on the Saturday Sports Show. Glad to have you with us. Hope you'll stay tuned. Saturday Sports Show is presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Back with Scott Gamber after this. Do you farm or operate an agriculture-based business? Then Community First Bank is for you. Hi, I'm Steve Down, Agribusiness Lending Officer at Community First Bank. With our roots firmly planted in Jefferson County, we offer the stability, strength, and personal attention that you deserve. Community First Bank wants to be your financial partner with customized products for both your personal and farm banking needs. Stop by any of our five convenient Jefferson County locations to see how we can help your business grow. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit crossroadscommunityhospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. WMIX, WMIXSports.com, as we welcome to the program Scott Gamber, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams. Rams fall to Altoff last night to a final of 44-36. Scott, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? You know, uh, been better, I suppose. But uh, you know, looking at the game last night, hopefully you're doing okay. Yeah. I mean, I could check on you, I suppose. <laughs> 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 Pardon my rudeness there, but um, you know what? I, I looked down a few times last night and didn't get to talk to you before the game. Kind of get a feel for you before that. But I, I, I gathered that in the second half, after a halftime lead of twenty three thirteen and a third quarter lead of twenty six nineteen. I think you were frustrated at times. Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, I felt like the first half, and then, and even the third quarter, especially probably the first five, six minutes of the third quarter, I really felt like that Altoff let the door open for us to really put them away. You know, they they probably could not have played worse than what they played in the first half. As far as I mean, they missed a lot of shots. 
a lot of shots that they normally make, and and they gave us a great opportunity to really get a big lead on them, and we just were never able to do that. And it just knew that that when a team's struggling like that and you don't put them away, it's just and especially when you're on the road and, and they're at home, it's just a matter of time before they get it going. And um, you know when they did. We, we did not have enough of a cushion. And then we did, we just, second half on both sides of the floor was just a really bad struggle. I mean, uh, we could not score, which I think is is, is now becoming a, a, a major problem because it's it's been, you know, three games in a row where, especially in the second half of the other games, we've not been able to score. And then um, just the combination of, I think, I think it's probably a little natural, but I think our frustrations of not being able to score on the offensive end led to us gambling and trying to make something happen on the defensive end. And you just can't do that because once you start gambling, then you're giving up easy baskets and you're getting out of what makes you you know, competitive. Well, and last night, of course, if I recall correctly, Altoff started off in a 2-3 zone, if I remember right. And then yes. a 10-0 run to start the game. Finally, they switched to man, seemed to be a lot more effective defensively in man defense. And then, you know, you look at Eric Fermanick getting a start last night after after a successful stint on the football field and not really being there for the first portion of the season. It is incredible how huge he was last night in the post because I can't tell you how many times in the second half trying to get inside and trying to do the things necessary to get some points, and he was swatting shots away and just adding that presence that would not allow us to get to the hoop. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was big is that, and, you know his defense really helped them. And then, you know, I don't I don't know how many points he had. I haven't looked at the stats or anything. But just the fact that he was out there, we had to we had to be aware of him. We had to help with him. Um, you know, I, I think that you know really helped their offense as well. And it got Michael in foul trouble. Michael played, you know, didn't play the second part of the second quarter and then missed some of the fourth quarter and. And everything. So yeah, he he's a big body and he's a load. But um, we've we've got to get a lot, lot, lot better handling pressure. Um, because in the past, when a team's been in zone and we've gotten them out of it to go man, that's been what we want, and that's been where we've kind of done well. Is hey, they've gotten out of their zone, they're extending their man. Now we can get some easy baskets, but, but right now we're panicking a little bit. Um, we're turning it over too much. And the other thing is, and, and this, this just happens, but we've got to be able to finish when we do get the opportunities. I mean, there in the third quarter, we had a couple layups that we, we missed. That If those get down, hey, we're up 10 or 11 instead of 7. We had several wide-open threes that we didn't get down, and I don't know. I don't remember having a field goal in the second half except for the one late that really didn't matter. It just felt like it was a nightmare there on the offensive end. Well, it was definitely a harsh reality, unfortunately, last night. But you you take a look at the successes of the first quarter and and into the second, but then you take a look by comparison at the tail of two teams' second half, and, and what do you do like in a practice situation or even after the game when you talk to your players? I mean, how do you address just one field goal? for what was, I believe, 15 minutes, 40 and 40-something, 40 44.9 seconds. I mean, how do you address that? I mean, what can you do as a coach? I mean, because you, you do everything you can from the sideline, but when you're relying on high school kids to go out there and, and make baskets or not make baskets, as we all know, anything can happen. Yeah, well, I think, you know, after the game, um, just told them, you know, disappointed that we lost, felt like we had an opportunity, and didn't I don't think it's going to do any good right now to, to scream and holler. Um, I just I just don't. I mean, I I think our kids played hard last night, and I think you you know that they obviously didn't want to miss those shots. So I mean, I, it wasn't wasn't overly mad today at practice. I think we have to do two things as coaches. I think one we have to really start emphasizing more and more just how important it is to take care. Of, I think we got to go back to doing a lot of drills where we're working on sweeping the ball, a lot of two- and three-man pass, a lot of stuff. I think we're getting a little bit lax in some of our passing, a little bit too one-handed. Um, you know, we, we had some turnovers last night for really no reason. 
Um, I think we really need to work on. Um, you know, last night, I thought in the second half we were able to draw, get initially get around our man and get into the interior of their defense. But then we've got to learn against an alt off that's got size against a Cahokia that's got. You can't you can't always just go in there out of control and throw up a shot. The firm is going to block it. You know, it, it's we've got to work on hey. Being able to beat that initial pressure, gathering ourselves, hitting the open man, gathering ourselves, finishing. And then the other thing as coaches, we have to look at ways um, that we can get our better player shots when our offense breaks down. We've got to look at ways to get our offense a little better against pressure, put them in spots to where they can you know, succeed against that. Because right now... Um, you know, last night I felt like felt like when we went to go set, it seemed like all talk did a decent job of taking us out of our sets. And I felt like our secondary stuff, um, we just we weren't getting enough out of it. And I think we need to look at hey, how can we get, how can when we really need a basket, how can we get something going towards the basket? Because I think right now we're relying a little too much on the perimeter shot, which is what our team, that's the team we have, that's the team what we're going to have to do, but. We've got to be able to get some some baskets, you know, either attacking or, or around the basket whenever we really need to. Four games left before Christmas, three of those at home. Is that the best way to kind of get things corrected for the holiday tournament is to be at home for three of those four? I think for sure. I mean, it's, it's you know, not really a tough place to play for opponents, and it's nice to have those games at home, but, um, you know, you've still got to win them, and, Obviously, we know what Cahokia is going to bring in Friday night. I mean, they're undefeated. They beat Centralia pretty badly last night, and they've, you know, <laughs> they're a lot of them out. Don't even want to start thinking about them yet. But we, you know, we we are. We're watching film this morning. We're practicing at eleven, and um, we're going to really go over their their pressure. And that's so why the, the one thing I told our guys is, like, do you think? This is taking nothing against Altoff from Mascuda or Centralia because they're all really good basketball teams. Um, I told me if if you if you're struggling against pressure against those three teams, you know, wait till Friday night because Cahokia athletes and size just is unreal this year. I mean, they're they're like a small college team. I mean, Rivers is their point guard. He's six five and. Vincent Jackson and Darius Austin and Minor. I mean, they, they've got, we're just loaded with talent. We've got to be able to find a way, slow the game down, take care of the basketball. We've got to finish when we get good opportunities, but you know, we, we can't, we cannot turn the ball over the way we have, and we cannot take the shots that we're taking against the Cahokia. It could be, it could be a long night. I've had a couple of people, and one whose opinion I, I immensely trust, describe Cahokia as like a late 90s South 7 Conference team. If, if you have seen Cahokia, is that an assessment that you would agree with? Yeah, I just I just don't know where you can help off them. I mean, they, they have five kids on the floor that can all shoot it. They can all attack the basket. They've got great size. I mean, I, I don't... I have not yet seen on film or in person where their weakness lies. Um, and it seems like that their ability to play a little bit different styles, um, you know, obviously Centralia last night would have tried to slow the tempo somewhat, and, and obviously that didn't work. And, um, you know, they're, they're just they're a really, really good basketball team. And But saying that, I think that if we'll play the right way Friday night, I think we have a chance to beat them. I, and I told her, I think, I think we can beat anybody on our schedule that we play. I really believe that. Um, and conversely, I think anybody on our schedule can beat us. But we, we've got a really, we've got five days to practice for Koki. We've got today, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Um, we've got, we've got a really, you know, Get a little more solid on the offensive end. I think our defense was good last night outside of gambling in the fourth quarter. When, and I, I think that was frustration more than anything. So we'll it's make an it important week. Well, we'll make it easy on you. I know it's a big week coming up, four games over the next week plus. 
The final question is our social media question of the week, and it's besides a bunch of wins, what is the best Christmas gift you've ever received? Oh, wow, that's best Christmas gift ever received. Uh-huh. I don't know. I have to think about that for a long time. That's a tough one. <laughs> Can't think really of it. Maybe I, my wife got me golf clubs for this Christmas. That's a pretty good. Wow. Pretty good, what kind did you yeah. get this time? I got the Callaway Razors. Nice. Oh, yeah. I have not gotten golf clubs since my eighth grade year. So Yeah, you're about due. I was due. You're due because you're not growing any taller, so you can get some fitted clubs, you know. Exactly. To match your swing, then you and Tommy Portner can go out there and play for some money then, of course. Probably not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not be a very good idea on my part. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome, though. Scott, of course, we uh, we will see you Friday night as the Rams take on Cahokia at Shagnon Gym, and hopefully uh, Shagnon will bring the Rams victory. Hope so. Thank you very much. That's Scott Gamber, head coach of the Malford and Rams. And one of those that last night, just from looking down there on that sideline, and, I mean, you look down all the time, you see coaches frustrated and, and, and whatnot, but just the look on his face at times and, and the frustration and then the frustration and all of the kids just wondering why those shots wouldn't drop. And, and uh, of course, Rams ended up falling to Al Toff last night and, and probably weren't in a position to, to have won it, of course, in the third. But anything can happen when, when you're dealing with high school kids and you feel for them just as much as you do the head coach. Probably doubly tough last night considering that Al Toff's at home. They just came off of football. They're probably not in basketball shape. Close to being won't be till after Christmas. And Mount Vernon had them dead to rights and let them get off the hook. And that game might look back if Mount Vernon finishes second or third in the conference. You look back at that game where you got to get out off now because you may not be able to get him as the season goes on. Well, and you're thankful, though, that that road game at Altoff is out of the way early in the season. We need to take a break on the Saturday Sports Show. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Don't forget the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. Find it on Facebook. Find it on Twitter. Find that access to both of those social mediums. Media. <laughs> At WMIXSports.com. We're back after this. Have you ever stopped to think about how much time we do not have during the day? Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ford dealer, Ford Square, and Chrysler dealer at King City Chrysler, Mount Vernon. How often do you forget to make that phone call for an oil change or to schedule a tune-up? I'm excited to tell you that you can schedule your service appointments online at Ford Square and King City Chrysler. Whether the workday is too chaotic to pick up the phone or basketball practice just won't allow you to stop by, we have you covered. Log on to FordSquare.com or KingCityChrysler.com to schedule your service appointment. Or, if you prefer to hear a friendly voice, feel free to call us anytime. We've made amazing quality service unbelievably easy at Ford Square and King City Chrysler Center in Mount Vernon. You can count on us. Also, find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hi, this is Nina Reitenauer, Relationship Banker with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. People's National Bank is focused on providing the best possible customer service and products to meet the needs of our customers. If you aren't receiving the products and services you desire, maybe it's time to make a change. Change the name of your bank for the last time and make the switch to People's National Bank. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC, wireless carrier fees may apply. Welcome back, Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals. More than a hospital, it's what healthcare should be. Denny's Rescue with Mike Richardson, Jeff Crow, Chris Hugo alongside. We switch off the hard court to the hardwood, basically the same thing. We go out to talk a little high school bowling. Joining us now is the Mount Vernon High School boys coach, bowling coach that is David Wagner. Coach, how are you this morning? Good morning, and thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for being on. Thanks. Uh, we got an opportunity to come out today and watch your team roll a little bit against Harrisburg in a match. Talk about your season so far. Seems to be off to a pretty decent start. Uh, the season's off to a real good start. Uh, varsity boys struggling a little bit. Uh, they they played against Salem and uh, Heron, kind of lost those games. Uh, came back and played against Harrisburg. We didn't do too well there. Uh come back last Thursday and we played against Carbondale and we beat them so I give the boys some uh, boost you know right. so that uh, I think they'll have they'll start turning on now 
Speaking of turning on, I, I noticed you know when these uh, you know your core sports, and I'm gonna say the ones that get the most following. But you see sports like bowling and bass fishing and others start coming around, and, and it helps all kinds of students get involved in athletic events. Talk about bowling and how it's grown in Mount Vernon and the ability to allow kids to do a sport that maybe a lot of kids wouldn't even go out for as far as the other sports are concerned. Well, that's the, uh, what I have found very amazing about it. Uh, it's kids that are coming out here that uh, have maybe they haven't even bowled before, but they're going to try it, but they're not doing anything at school. Mm-hmm. They're not participating, and they're getting active in this. Uh, they're building new friendships. They're learning a sport. They're doing good with it. I, I think it's very good for the school. A bowling is unique in the fact that, like golf, even some kids will play basketball. They're done in high school. Football, they may be done in high school. Uh, eventually, you got to quit playing at a competitive level. But bowling is something, like golf, you can do the rest of your life and be competitive. Correct. You're, yeah, it's a sport that is going to last a lifetime. Uh, talk about some of your bowlers on your team that are carrying your squad this year and the rest of this season. Well, on the boys' side, I have got a couple of boys that are averaging in the 190s, uh, Maverick Wagner and Brandon McPherson. They're both uh, pretty strong shooters, and um, uh, they're going to carry the, the team pretty good. Um, I have three freshmen this year coming in that are going to be very good bowlers, and uh, I'm excited about them. Brett Dameron, uh, Kyle Bean, and Seth Gass. They're my freshmen, and I really look for them to they're going to bowl today in the conference, and uh, I hope they don't melt down. I just hope they can take the pressure and, and do me a good job. I look at when we came out, I've seen bowling matches at high school level and came out the other day especially. It's interesting to me, there's not a lot of sitting around going on. It seems to me that the camaraderie and the enthusiasm and excitement between teammates uh, you know, really goes through and shows no matter what, what goes on in a bowling match at the high school level. Susan Gentry is our girls coach and myself. We both got the same philosophy. We we both want it. It's a team. They've got to they've got to participate as a team, even though it's just individuals. You know, bowling. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got to be able to when when one of the players throws a bad ball, they need to lift that player up and, and try to get them back on track. And uh, the the kids do that pretty good. Do a good job at that. Speaking of a good job today, Mount Vernon, New Bowl Lanes hosts the South 7 Conference Tournament. That's a nice honor to have, to have that ability to host the six other, five other schools coming in for that South 7 Conference Tournament this afternoon in New Bowl. Oh, it is. It's a wonderful experience. Uh, first time we've had it here. Uh, makes me awful nervous, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm looking for a good day. A good day with all the schools coming in and bowling. Another honor that you have picked up, at least the school has as well, is the fact that Mount Vernon and New Bowl Lanes will be hosting a sectional for both the boys and the girls in postseason. That's got to be handy, at least get started off on your home lanes as far as the sectional is concerned. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I look at this as a plus, but uh, I, I hope that the kids, you know, will uh, really concentrate on how they're throwing the ball because, Sometimes we take our home shot for granted, and uh, it, that's not going to always be the case. But they've got to think about every shot they're taking, and I, I hope that they can do that. What time do the festivities kick off for that South 7 Conference bowling meet today? 11 o'clock. 11 a.m., free to the public. Yep. Come on in and watch. Yep. I want to touch a little bit on my girls' team. I've oh, got, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, over the last few years we've been working hard on the girls team and we've got a varsity team that i think is going to be competitive with every school uh i've got one young lady taylor allen she's shooting a 193 average Alyssa dudley and uh olivia rios they're both in the 170s and michaela Inkoff, all in the 170s so i think we've got a good girls team this year that's uh going to be very very competitive well, the future looks bright for the bowling program, Malvern High School, but our, we ask our WMIX social media question of the week here at this time, and this time we go. We want you to look back in the past. Our question this week is, what is the best Christmas gift you have ever received? Uh, <laughs> Besides a 300 game. 
has nothing to do with uh, uh, bowling. I got a pony one year for Christmas. Uh, Mom and Dad got it for us and put it in the garage, and, uh, well, that was a special Christmas. Well, hey, it was, and, Dave, we hope you have a special day today with the South Seven Conference meet. We wish the Rams and Lady Rams the best of luck and hope everybody can get out there to New Bowl and cheer on the Rams and Lady Rams today. Thank you very much. That's David Wagner. Thanks for joining us here on the Saturday Sports Show. He's the head coach of the Mount Vernon Boys Bowling Team. You hear pins in the background. Had a little everything there. That South Seven Conference meet. At New Bowl Lanes here in Mount Vernon. It starts at 11 a.m. Free to the public. You can go out and watch. It's an interesting event to go watch. Watch high school bowling. If you've never been to one, go to one because it's very interesting. It's competitive. And, again, it's one of those deals. Bowling's like golf. You can play the rest of your life. You don't ever have to retire if you don't want to. We have to retire for a break. When we come back on the other side, joining us next will be the head coach, of the Johnston City Indians. Boys basketball team, Wade Thomas, on the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Let's be thankful that it's time for high school hoops. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. From the turkey tourneys to postseason glory, WMIX and WMIXSports.com have all the action of Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams basketball. Find a full slate of games and watch most of the action online at WMIXSports.com or keep your dial tuned to WMIX for Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams basketball. Powered by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals, more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Danny Kowinski, Mike Richardson, Jeff Crow, Chris Hugel in the studio. Joining us now on the phone lines from Johnston City, Illinois, the head coach of the Indians boys basketball team, Wade Thomas. Mr. Notre Dame, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing okay, Danny. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I know you had a tough one last night, but overall... Not a bad start for your Indians this season. Yeah, it, uh, we are doing okay. Uh, kind of lost to Tuffy last night, but uh, I think we're making uh, making some good strides. Uh, just, you know, when you get an opportunity to win on the road, a conference game, you want to find a way to get it done. And last night we just come up a little short. Came up short, but I want to ask this. We had Scott McElravey on the show last week from Fairfield, and we talked to him about conference tournament scheduling and staying away from teams. You guys made a move from Vianna to the newly formed Goreville tournament this year. How hard is it that for Johnston City to find a tournament or tournaments to get in and stay away from teams you play all the time? Well, it is. It's tough. You know, uh, that was that was probably the biggest factor uh, with us making the move to go from Vianna to Goreville. We weren't uh, we weren't disappointed with anything at at Vianna. We just wanted to. You know, try to get away from uh, some conference schools. El Dorado and Vianna was in that, and, and last year we played El Dorado five times. So, you know, that provided us an opportunity to see some new teams. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, and and it was a very good tournament. Goreville, Todd, and, and uh, everybody at Goreville put on a really good uh, event for the first year, and uh, I think they're going to have a a special tournament for years to come. The Black Diamond East, it seems to me like it's kind of altered over the years. Carmi, Fairfield, Johnston City, ever since this new form of the Black Diamond Conference. Uh, for our listeners, just exactly how tough it is to play game in and game out in the Black Diamond East? It's, you know, it's it's like any conference. It's a battle every night. Um, you know, not being, uh, <clears throat> I think, I truly think that, that, that our league has has been, more balanced over the last couple of years. I don't think overall, top to bottom, it's been real good, just to be honest. Um, but traditionally, when you talk about McLeansboro and Carmine and Fairfield and El Dorado, uh, you're talking about some really good programs traditionally throughout time. Um, but I do think it is a little bit more balanced. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to win on the road, and, and when you can uh, go win, you, you know, you look at who's, won the league the last few years, those people have been able to go on the road and steal some wins, 
and then protect home court. And that's like in any conference, that's what it takes to win a conference championship. After opening up with six games basically on the road, you finally get a couple of home games before the holiday tournament starts, two out of three next to over the next few weeks at home. How does that help your team heal up as you go along in this first half of the season? Well, it, I think it will be uh, I think it will be nice to be able to come back and play at home. You know, we've not had a home game yet. We've got two next week. Um, we've got uh, Sessor at home on Tuesday and then El Dorado at home on Friday. And then we turn around and, and close out before the the holiday tournament we go uh to to fairfield so we've got a busy week next week and you know el dorado uh got them a big win last night uh against a very athletic fairfield team uh so you know we've got uh chip and his kids coming over tuesday and you know sessor traditionally has been as good of a 1a program as there has been around you know with the, the runner-up finish a few years back so you know it's going to be uh it's going to be a busy week for us Busy week for your team. Talk about some of the kids that you're relying on this season to get you a bunch of wins. Well, we've got a lot of kids that return. That's one thing that we we have a lot of experience back. Uh, we only have one senior, so we're still a fairly young group. Uh, Austin McFerrin is a senior who uh, uh, we rely on and have relied on for uh, for three years now to, to end up and, and do a lot for us in scoring and rebounding on both ends of the floor. Uh, juniors, uh, Hunter Ziegler. Uh, Hunter has started since he was a freshman, so I think it's <laughs> the game has kind of changed for him from a standpoint of playing against all the older, bigger, stronger guys. Now he is one of those uh, veterans now, so the game has, has become a lot easier for him, and, and uh, he's done a really good job. Uh, Levi Tanner, a junior that started for us uh, most of last year. Uh, Jake Davis, a post kid that's a junior, uh, has start, started for us last year. And then uh, Luke McCormick. A uh, kid to come off the bench, a junior, uh, and then Derek Smith. Derek didn't play last year; played uh, two years ago, but uh, come back and and uh, it's funny this year. Derek had a really nice golf season and and placed in the, the the state golf tournament, so we're really happy to have him back. Happy to have you at the Cesar Valero Holiday Tournament as well. You're also at Frankfurt in midwinter. A couple of good tournaments for your team to get out and see some competition, whether it's a one A school or see some two A's as it is in West Frankfurt. Yeah, and you know that's that's the nice thing. Uh, Cesar is a is an outstanding uh, tournament. You know, uh, traditionally has been really good. They do a great job over there. Their whole community uh, puts on a really really good Christmas tournament. You know, and it's kind of a nice it's nice for us because that gives us an opportunity. You know, you talk about our conference and the east side of the Black Diamond. Now you you know Viana is in that event, uh, but everyone else is is typically people that are on the the west side of the Black Diamond, or in some other conferences, so it gives us an opportunity to see people that we may not see in the in the regular season. And uh, you know, with Woodlawn and Goreville, uh, and then all the rest of the teams over, it's a really, really good. You're going to have a hard time finding a, any better of a small uh, small school tournament than the Cesar tournament. An, an off the floor question about Johnston City: You have the new school; it's been built in recent years. Everybody knows about the new football facility, new softball, baseball field getting reworked in the future. Uh, the excitement and the winning and that's going on, how has that been for the school, the kids, the staff, the community, building into that and growing off of that atmosphere and spirit going on? Well, I think, you know, any time that there's anything new, uh, there's change with change. Uh, you know, there, there comes uh, some uncertainty or, or not wanting to, to, to make change, but you know, here in in this situation, uh, the facilities that uh, you know our our community now has, uh, and hopefully will continue to grow with. It's just it's awesome. It's awesome for the kids to be able to uh, have something to be proud of, to go from you know um, having a facility that maybe people don't have real nice things to say about to when you see somebody or somebody sees you and says, "Hey, I come by and you know we played there the other night," or uh, we were there for a junior pro game, uh, you know, and, and people to compliment, uh, to compliment, you know, on what your facilities are. It's just a sense of pride. I think it's something that, you know, with this, um, you know, I think it raises our level of expectation, you know, whether it be in the weight room or whether it be uh, on one of the playing surfaces. It's just uh, something that, you know, not only our kids can be proud of, but, again, I think it, it's something that it just ends up and, and really helps the community as well. And, 
And like I said, from a coaching standpoint, I think it's something that we kind of, you know, want to stress to our kids that, you know, this is a, something that our, our, our school board and our administration has made made this big step. So now it's time for us to go ahead and take the next step also uh, as athletes. Speaking of the next step, I'll go way off the bar here and say, is Notre Dame going to be capable of taking that next step and knocking off the defending national champ, Alabama? I, you know, that's, you know, Alabama and SEC football, I mean, people can, you know, talk about they get tired of hearing, you know, and seeing them being at the being at the spotlight in, in college football. But, you know, the athletes in the SEC are, are unbelievable, you know, and, and it, it's just, it's neat to be, uh, you know, being a, a Notre Dame fan since I was a kid to be able to see them be up there and being able to at least have a chance. Can they end up in, and beat Alabama? You know, it's going to be awfully tough. But, you know, when you look at, you know, what Coach Kelly's done and, and, and their defense and how, you know, they've gotten more efficient offensively and just put themselves, uh, you know, in, in the spot to be successful in a one-game in a one game national championship, you know, they do have a shot. If they was going to play Alabama ten times, I'd say Alabama's going to win eight or nine. But maybe that one <laughs> one game, maybe the Irish have got a shot. Well, the Golden Domers will have a shot, as you will, at our WMI Sports social media question of the week. And this week's question is, what is the best Christmas gift you have ever received? Uh, ooh. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to say... Uh, my son was born on the twenty second of December, so I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna say Kate being born is probably the best Christmas gift. Very nice. Good coach, thanks for being on. Good luck the rest of the season. I'm sure I'll see you somewhere in the gym nearby here in the short and near term future. All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Mike Wade Thomas, head coach of the Johnson City Boys basketball team, off to a good start. Have a couple of home games next week, and of course we'll get to see him as we as a showcase at the Cesar Valera Holiday Tournament. We'll step out for a break when we come back. A guy returning back to the area in head coaching, Mike Denald at Trico High School, will join us. You're listening to the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. You're looking for a great quality SUV to get you through the winter, right? Well, Second Chance Auto has never had a better selection. Find SUVs from small to medium to large. Four-wheel drive models, too. Their inventory has never been better. Cars, trucks, vans, and many priced under $10,000. Instant approval with honest deals on great vehicles. Most have a three-month or 3,000-mile warning. And there's bank rate financing for everyone. Make this your best year with a quality SUV from Second Chance Auto. Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Call 244-4582. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. My name's Rowinski, Jeff Crow, Mike Richardson, Chris Hugo, all in the studio. And we welcome in a guy familiar to the area. He left us for a bit, but he just missed us so much he had to come back to Trico Boys Basketball Coach Mike Denald. How are you this morning, Coach? Hey, Danny. I've, I've been better, but I know. Uh, you know I'm going to survive. Hey, I know you always have. My first question to you is, you were at Waltonville a couple of years ago. You left to go north to New Berlin High School to be a principal of the school district. In that time you were an administrator there, did the itch ever come back wanting to get back into coaching while you were there? Well, it was always there. I, I really, it wasn't about uh, wanting to leave coaching. It, it was more about wanting to explore, you know, new challenges uh, and new positions. And, um, you know, I, the entire two years I was there, uh, it was difficult for me to go in the gym and, and not, you know, think about, you know, strategies of basketball or how I would do things. And, you know, you're really guarded as an administrator when you go in the gym and keep those thoughts to yourself. you got to support your coach, and, you know, because everybody likes to be critical of the, of the coach. Uh, so I feel like I did a good job of that. But, 
you know, after a couple of years and I got some experience, I felt I got an opportunity to come back and, you know, and, and be able to fulfill both roles. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's where I am. It's filling both roles. You were at New Berlin. Now you get both roles at Trico. And it's one thing to be a coach and having to deal with everything. Another thing with the administrative side of things that you and I and other C in school districts having to do on, how do you balance the time between administrative and coaching and basketball things to make sure everything gets equal amount of time to be worked on? Well, it's, it's not easy, you know, it's, and, I, and I'm learning that. But uh, I, I think the thing that you do is, you you know, you, you, you lean on your assistant coaches a little bit more and uh, – and give them a little bit more responsibility, and I feel like I've done that better than I did at Waltonville. Uh, but you know, first and foremost, uh, I'm, a, I'm the principal at the high school, and I got to make sure that uh, academically and you know, educationally, we're we're getting things done there because that's that's why they're paying me. But uh, you know, basketball, being a basketball coach is not a job to me. It's 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 what I do. You know, it's it's what I've always done, and. You know that that time that I spend doing that it is more like a, I guess it's more like a hobby than a job to me. So, uh, you know, it, I guess it's kind of a release from from that other part of the part of the job, and, and kind of gets you away from it. So, in that respect, it, it, it it's good for you because it's it's kind of a, it's just a change of of thinking, and, and you know, it, it's it's just nice to get away from you know the the principal part of it for a couple hours a day, and and to be able to. To, to have them, you know, sometimes, sometimes as a principal, we have our days aren't always positive. We gotta, yeah. we gotta deal with things that sometimes aren't positive, and to be able to get back uh, with the with the kids and, and uh, to coach and, and do something that you love, it's 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 a nice change of pace. Change of pace. Your team started with that Trico tournament championship last week, and then of course, tough one with Oakville last night at the arena. But everybody's going to have lots of tough times at Oakville when they play them this year. But overall, great start to the season for you and your first season back in Trico. Well, we we did have a good first week, and uh, you know, and I felt like uh, we had some good games there. But you know, going into last night's game, I, I'd seen I'd had an opportunity to see Oakville play both live and on tape a couple times, and. You know, I knew they were going to be a handful, uh, and I don't think that our, our kids were uh, quite as ready to play maybe as they needed to be last night. I, I don't think they underestimated Oakville. I just think that uh, you know, we came out of the gate the first four minutes of that game. It pretty well decided the game. You know, they, they set the tone. Uh, and they, they did some things. Uh, I think we had they got two uh, breakaway layups in the first three possessions. Uh, because we didn't execute offensively, we didn't get a step off, we didn't get a set of back screen to be able to get space to enter the ball into the high post, and to couple that with the fact that you know we just didn't make shots. It, that was really the difference in the game early. Those early turnovers, and, and then the fact that you know we we I felt like we got the shots we needed to get early in the game. We just couldn't make them, and that continued throughout the game, and. You know, you play a team like them, they're as disciplined as they are. They had three turnovers for the game, and uh, they just don't make a lot of mistakes. And you make mistakes, they're compounded with uh, with their execution on the other end. And uh, that, that's kind of where we suffered last night. And, you know, I've been asked a couple times uh, by the media, in the la- you know, since the game ended last night, uh, if, if we're just going to write this off as a bad game. And, you know, I'm not ready to do that because I, I think that, uh, we can learn some things from that game. Um, you know, it, they're a very good basketball team, a measuring stick for us. And, and we, I think we see in them kind of some of the things that, that we're striving for as a team, especially defensively. Uh, so, you know, we, we've got some things we're going to learn from this. Our guys, it's going to be painful for them to watch the film when we get ready to do that today. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, John Krause does a great job over there at Oakville, and he always has, and I've had plenty of plenty of good battles with him when I was at Waltonville, and, uh, you know, I, I certainly just feel like this is a, a game that, uh, even though we didn't compete with them maybe as well as we should have, but it, it'll help us down the line. Now speaking of helping you down the line, you have the Black Diamond Western Division, a battle through the likes of Goreville, Sesser, Christopher, among others. But you also have the Carbondale Holiday Tournament and the Sparta Midwinter Classic to play in. That, to me, is a nice little addition to the schedule of Trico when you play in those two tournaments. Yeah, 
you know, and, and I don't know, I don't know a ton about about the uh, Carbondale Holiday Tournament yet because I haven't been there. But um, you know, I, I realize that the quality of competition there is, is going to be very good, and that there's going to be a lot of different styles that we're going to see. I am familiar with a couple of teams there. You know, I'm familiar with Carterville, obviously, and I know they're having a, a pretty good year, and, and then. Uh, Cairo, I believe, is down there, and I got to play them when I was at Waltonville, and also Madison. So, you know, there's there's certainly going to be a lot of different styles of play we're going to see there, and there's some very, very good basketball teams, and I look for that to be a good challenge for us. And hopefully, over the next two and a half weeks, uh, you know, we could get prepared for that with the games that we have coming up in the Black Diamond. I think we've got uh, four, four games uh, before Christmas remaining, uh, all Black Diamond games. And, and between that and, and hopefully having, uh, you know, a couple of very, very good weeks of practice, uh, we'll be prepared for that tournament, and, and we can go back to the arena and, and uh, you know, get that bad taste out of our mouth that we, we suffered with last night. You know, as far as the Sparta, the Midwinter Classic, you know, I am I am somewhat familiar with that. I got to, to coach in that tournament for a year where I was at Steelville. It's been, it's been quite a while ago, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I am familiar with most of those teams, and, and it's a it's a pretty good tournament. A lot of a lot of local teams. Uh, you know, Murfreesboro is down there. Ducoin's over there, and we'll see Ducoin again uh, after after Christmas. Uh, obviously, we played Sparta and Steelville already. I think Redbud might be over there. Uh, so, you know, it, I, I think that's certainly going to be another another good tournament for us, at, and coming at the right time of year. I, the thing I noticed last night, tongue in cheek, with you and your coaching staff, maybe one of the tallest starting fives as far as coaching staffs are concerned in Southern Illinois. Yeah, you take me, you take me out of the mix. They, well, you you got, be the point guard. We got some good length there, but uh, you know, I we we talked about that the other day. If we couldn't find maybe some uh, some teams uh, around the area that might want to play some five on five against this, and uh, I think we fare pretty well with the group that I got there. I think Oakville might give us a good run with with the five guys they got. I'm not sure how many other teams uh, around that that could match up with us. <laughs> I don't believe either, but I got something you can match up with. We usually ask our final questions our WMI Sports social media question of the week, and this week's question is: What is the best Christmas gift you have ever received? Oh my gosh! I know that the best. That, that's put me on the spot right there. The best Christmas gift yeah. I have ever received. Oh my! I don't. I don't know that I have a good answer for that. I I know it's a hard I, question. My wife does such a good job every year. She spoils me pretty good with with some of the things that she's bought me in the past. But I, I don't even. I can't even give you a pinpoint. Maybe what the best Christmas gift. I guess the best Christmas gift I receive. I receive every year. That's the opportunity to spend two or three days uninterrupted with my my wife and my kids. Just uh, you know, being able to you know in, in the role that I play. With and, and as a coach, you just don't get that time uh, very often to, to spend two, three, four days uninterrupted with them. And uh, you know, around Christmas time, I, hopefully, I'll get to spend the 24th and the 25th, two days, and uninterrupted with them at least. Well, we hope so too, Mike. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you down the road at a gym near you. And we'll of course have you back here on the Saturday Sports Show. So, thanks for joining us. All right, thanks. That's Mike Denault, the head coach of the Trico Pioneer Boys Basketball Team, off to a 5-1 and one start at the Black Diamond Western Conference. We're way over behind on breaks. We need to take a break. We'll come back, talk about some scores, talk about a game on the AM last night just a little bit. We'll do more of it later. Upcoming schedule of the week, everything here at WMIX. You're listening to the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Hi, this is Joe Gliosi, commercial banker for People's National Bank in beautiful Mount Vernon, Illinois. People's National Bank has served local businesses and farmers for over 100 years. With a wide variety of deposit and loan products, we have all your banking needs covered. From opening or expanding a business to purchasing a farm implement for the upcoming season, People's National Bank is here to help. Stop by today and let us show you what a true community bank can do for you. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois farmers and businesses since 1909. Member FDIC. This is WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, another Withers Broadcasting Station. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois proudly welcomes Dr. Brian Steinke to their medical staff. 
Dr. Steinke earned his medical degree at the University of Illinois in Chicago and has degrees in anatomy and physiology from UC Berkeley, and he brings prestigious credentials to the center. Dr. Steinke is a gifted physician and contributor to orthopedic textbooks. Call 618-242-3778 or visit their informative website at orthocenter-si.com. Are you interested in a career in the culinary arts but can never afford the high cost of cooking school? Red Lake College has a low-cost recipe for success. For as little as $5,500 per year, you can get a quality culinary arts education in your own backyard. That even includes books, tuition, class fees, and supplies. Learn to master domestic fare, pastry, and foreign cuisine in Ina, Illinois. Save thousands on a culinary arts education at Red Lake College. For more information, log on to rlc.edu slash culinary arts. Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Uh, we'll talk a little basketball here before our next guest in the second hour, Russ Gerlock from Wayne City, the Wayne City Tournament. The Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament, 59th annual, starts today. Rick Metcalf, coach of the SVW girls basketball team, their game today on FM, around 2.20 pregame. SVW in Hamilton County, a much-anticipated girls game. And at 9.30... Lady Rams head basketball coach Jeff Lonnen, Danny Swinski, Jeff Crow, Chris Hugo, and Mike Christian alongside. Last night, a game on the AM. Woodlawn played at the SIU Arena against Breeze Modern Day, lost 41 25. And Mike, one of those games, kind of like Mike Denault says, you don't want to forget about it because you don't want to forget what you've got to work on. But a game, when you look at it in perspective, a long season, it's one of those. Woodlawn learned a lot of things last night that will go a long way in helping the Cardinals this season. Yeah, I think sometimes coaches get caught up, and I think myself to blame at times, too. You you want to just get that uh, feeling out of your mind as quick as possible, but yet you know, you got to step back and, and look and know that this is a learning experience. You've got to take some positive things out of every every bad situation. You can still take something positive out of it, and uh, sometimes we forget to do that. But you're right, then there will be strides made to work on rebounding, uh, I think just uh, as we've seen how the second half started a little bit with a little bit running more of an option on the first part of plays, looking inside a little bit more, um, there'll be things changing, and it is. It's so early. you got five games under your belt. The exact same record the Woodlawn Cardinals had this time last year, maybe two straight years, I think. It could yeah, possibly it be. it is. So, uh, yeah, so uh, not anybody jumping off the, uh, the tall buildings at Woodlawn, which we don't have a lot of tall ones anyway. but No. Again, and at this point in the season, maybe a case of players learning their new roles and a case of trying to shake off that um, head-in-the-clouds feeling from last year. I mean, uh, I don't want to go through the Kentucky thing, but it's very similar that what was done last year was done. I know some of you were a part of it, but you got to shake that head-in-the-clouds feeling get back down to earth and get things going because this year is a new year. Nobody cares about last year at this point. Uh, yeah, and that's true, and that, and that's why we always talk about, uh, you know, you're talking about 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, and nowadays that they're reminded of that all the time. You walk through the halls of school, and you see the trophy case, and you wear the T-shirts. And, oh, yeah. I mean, everybody reminds you and pats you on the back, and that's yep. all great. That's awesome. It was fantastic, and it's something uh, we'll never forget, but every year is on its own. Yep. And I think there is an adjustment. We commented on the pregame show last night. Five games, three different lineups. Uh, probably next game or two, a different lineup. you got to find the right combination and, and try to find a little more offensive spark uh, in that rotation and not have to rely on Gabe Owens so much to get Woodlawn off to such a start. Um, all 11 points and a half. That's not been done many, many times in the game of basketball oh, no. for sure. And you know, it makes it a little bit easier for defenses to start keying on people. But, uh, you know, a little silver lining last night. They did get more offense on the inside part in that second half. And we got we all also got to remember, we got to give Modern Day a lot of credit. That's a good basketball team. And that team with 2A status now, that team's primed to make a run this year. There is no doubt about it because they're going to get better. And they went 10 deep last night. And... Uh, after three different lineup changes that they made, I think we finally got the correct one on the floor. But, uh, yeah, that's how versatile they are. So give them a lot of credit in disrupting some of the things from the Woodlawn Cardinals last night. 
I'm looking forward to this week. We have several good games of the showcase on the boys' side. We have girls game as well. Two girls games. Monday night it's Weber and North Clay at Weber. Wednesday night it's Woodlawn at Galatia girls. But we get to do Carlisle Waltonville on Tuesday night. That's going to be a tremendous matchup. The Indians looking good. Waltonville off to an undefeated start. And the Spartans under Brian Gamber starting to find their way a little bit, get some wins under their belt, and really looking like a t- tough, tough team, whether it's Midland Trail or otherwise. Well, I got off to a great start with the turkey tournament down at Christopher, and you know you brought back a couple of starters, the uh, sixth man. You know, and some enthusiasm down there, knowing this was going to be a, a good team this year. And, and he stepped in and done a good job, good scheduling right off the bat. Undefeated, as yep. we speak, and the momentum for those guys. It's got to be sky high right now. I mean, you beat a good Egyptian team in the championship round of Christopher Tournament. So momentum's got to be sky high. Uh, now, you can't look ahead. Andy Palmer's bringing a good Carlisle team. You can't look oh, yeah. too far ahead because of the rival that's going to be taking place on Friday night. I heard there's a game. <laughs> so, yeah, we sort of caught wind. There wasn't yeah, a big heard, game yeah. Friday night. Yeah. And a game like that probably couldn't come at a better time for Woodlawn. You know, get that rival. Now get a conference game. Get a JV game. I think we reiterated this fact as well. Boy, the JV kids, they're the ones that sort of been left out a little yep. bit here early in the year, and they're the guys that's been busting it in practice for the varsity and things of that nature. So they're they're anxious to get their season going. And now when you get that extra game with the JV and you know what lineup you're going to have there, that might dictate a little bit on the varsity rotation now and maybe get things a little more at ease uh, for Woodlawn. But uh, Waltonville can overlook Carlisle Tuesday before that game Friday night. That game Tuesday, Carlisle Waltonville in the FM 94.1. We'll be at Wayne City on Thursday night. We'll talk about that in a second for two games, for Wayne City game and the Bluefern game. That'll also be on the FM Friday night. Waltonville at Woodlawn, the clash of West Jefferson County once again, the best rivalry in the county, will happen on Friday night. That'll be on AM 940. Of course, all games stream live at WMIXSports.com. As I said, the 59th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament begins today. We'll take a break. Joining us on the other side will be the Wayne City head boys basketball coach, Russ Gerlock, to join us to talk us about that holiday tournament the 59th annual Conrad Allen. You're listening to the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. We all remember staying up all night studying for those math tests. Many of us remember the Dodge Dart. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Dodge dealer at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. So what happens when you add the interior spaciousness of a midsize sedan, plus class-leading 60 safety and security features, and multiply them by up to three state-of-the-art powertrains with engines boasting up to 41 miles per gallon highway. You get the 2013 Dodge Dart. The Dodge is back with Dodge Passion and designed with Alfa Romeo DNA. Come see the all-new Dodge Dart SE at King City Chrysler starting at just $18,995. Or log on to kingcitychrysler.com to see all of our new and pre-owned inventory. There is something for everyone here at King City Chrysler Center at 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, and also find us on Twitter and Facebook. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit crossroadscommunityhospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. WMIX Sports on the social media. We're on Twitter at WMIX Sports. Follow us there or go to Facebook page, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. Like us. We have all kinds of stuff we put there daily as well as we're on the World Wide Web, WMIXSports.com. Saturday Sports Show now shifts gears in the second hour of guests. Joining us, the Wayne City Boys High School basketball coach, Russ Gerlock, on the line to talk a little Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. Coach, how are you this morning? Good. How are you guys? Well, doing well here in Mount Vernon. A special event kicks off this afternoon, actually this morning at 1130. The 59th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. Hard to believe that it's already up to its 59th year of existence. I was going to say, it's been around for a long time. I know uh, 
I've talked to Mr. Allen about it in the past, and, you know, he was kind of upset that there was only a couple tournaments going on. There was nothing really for small schools. So, you know, 58, 59 years ago, he decided to get one going, and we're happy it's still going now. Happy it's still going, 10 teams by my count in this tournament. How hard is it? You have 10 teams in a tournament, try to set up a schedule, make it equal, days off, not play same conference teams or opponents you've already seen. How hard is that in general for AD, Tony Richardson, and you to set this thing up? Well, it is pretty hard because we do have at least uh, five teams that are in our conference to begin with. Uh, plus, you know, we do play Edwards County in the regular season. Uh, you know, like Thompsonville, they're playing – Weber today, and uh, we didn't realize we made the schedule, but they played last night. You know, so there's it's hard to, to avoid a lot of that stuff. Really, Patoka and Crab Orchard are the t- only two teams that you know probably haven't played some of these other guys already. So it's tough, but you know we try to do the best we can, and you know, for the most part, I think we've done a pretty good job while I've been here. Speaking of pretty good job, this tournament, as you said, a great one A showing. It's kind of the, I guess, would be the appetizer of holiday tournaments because it's the first one out of the gate. And it's special because you guys run it for a week, so ample opportunities for fans to go out and see these teams all week long, starting today and running every night through next Saturday. Yeah, well, see, when I started here, we only had eight teams, so it just went from Monday to Friday. And then uh, we had a couple teams show some interest, and then I don't know how much you know about this, but Clay City, there was some talk about whether or not their school was going to even stay open, mm-hmm. and then so they were kind of in and out of the tournament and all that, and then they wanted back in, so... You know, we end up jumping to 10 teams, and you know, it is nice. You know, we got basically eight days or seven days of basketball, and like you said, that's 23 games over those seven days, and a lot of chance to come in and watch. Well, games today, 1131, 234, and 530, and then next week, Monday through Friday, games every night, 537 and 830, and in a week from the day, your pool play games of trophies, fifth, third, and championship at 5, 630, and 8. For you, the coach, for the kids of Wayne City that put that uniform on, that play on their home floor and play in this tournament, can you explain in words what that means to you and your players to play in this prestigious tournament? Well, I'd say before I got here as a coach, the big thing I wanted was a regional. Uh, you know, just one of those things that that's really one of the, the one trophy that I really wanted. But when you get to some place like Wayne City, it's hosted their own tournament forever, and you realize how much it means to the people who've lived here their whole life, to the alumni who've, you know, they've, they've won a gold ball themselves, and, you know, they want to see the other kids win one. It's, it is a pretty big deal. Now, our kids want to have a good showing in it. They want to, you know, they see those 13, 14 gold balls when they walk into the gym lobby every day, so they'd like to know that they were, they were responsible for one of them as well. Speaking of being responsible, these teams, again, will play. And, you, and I think the thing about Wayne City is, too, is the fact that not only the games are good, the teams are good, but the fact that the people involved that help out with the scoring, the announcing, uh, running people in security, and especially hospitality room. It's just everybody builds in a community pride kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. You've know, got a lot of people who've been involved a long time, uh, you know, who've helped out. You know, the, you know our principal, and our, our scorekeepers, our, you know, A.D. Tony Richardson. We've got a lot of alumni who, you know, they care about the school and that they care about this tournament, and that makes it a lot better as well. And even though I'm not from around here, or here originally, I, I care a lot about it too because, you know, we do take a lot of pride in having a, a very well-run tournament, and you know, we like that. I think we're going to have a, a great tournament every year, and we hope that we get a lot of people coming out and watching the games. Watching the big games all week. We'll be there next week to do games on Thursday night. Z.R. Weber, Patoka, Wayne City. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to this. Your response to our WMI Sports social media question of the week. What's your best Christmas gift you've ever received? Well, I had to think about that one for a little bit, but I have I got two answers. I think I did this to you last time too. Uh huh. Three years three years ago, Clive, my youngest son, was born right before right during the tournament actually. Okay. So that was sort of an early Christmas present. But going back to when I was a kid, I would have to say, you know, right around nineteen eighty to eighty two, somewhere in there, I got a Millennium Falcon from the Star Wars movie. Oh. It's still at my mom and dad's house, and it still has Han Solo and Chewbacca in it. So I'd say it's probably the best gift from when I was a kid. I mean, is that is still in pretty good condition after playing with it all those years? Well, I'll say, I remember the last time I checked it out, which was right around when uh, my first son was born, to see if I could bring it home or not. I know it won't stand up anymore. It'll fall down on <laughs> the you know the, the supports. Yeah. But it is still, you can definitely still play with it. Well, that's good. Speaking of standing up, i got to go another question. I, made it, I said I was going to be the last one then, but... 
Uh, Co- Camp Coach Cal starting with the conditioning for our Wildcats. you think this might wake him up, or you think this season is going to be tough to deal with? Well, I think it will wake a few of them up, I'm sure. I, I read a little bit about it uh, yesterday on Twitter. Uh, you know, I think he's just disappointed with the effort overall. I think a lot of the kids just, I think they saw the kids last year come in and, you know, I don't want to say win an easy championship, but for the most part have a pretty dominant season, obviously. And I think they just assume they could just waltz in and do the same thing. And they're finding out pretty quick that it's a heck of a lot harder to do than what you think. And uh, I think it's probably one of those wake-up calls. And, you know, obviously any time a coach does that, there's going to be a few kids that get it. And unfortunately there's still going to be some that don't. Coach, thanks for answering our call this morning and for joining us on the Saturday Sports Show. We'll see you next week. We look forward to doing the Wayne City Indians game next Thursday night against Potoka. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks right. for calling. Thank you. Russ Gerlock, head coach of the Wayne City Indians, joining us. 59th annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament begins today at Wayne City High School. Five games on tap today at 11 31, 2 34, and 5 30. You can find a schedule of those games posted on our Facebook site, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. A schedule of games today posted for you to see a great tournament get out there all games today and then all six days next week in the evening at wayne city high so we need to step out take a break coming up on the other side rick metcalf the head coach of the sv lady devils girls basketball team undefeated and on today on wmix 94.1 fm as well as wmixsports.com as they travel to hamilton county you're listening to the saturday sports show brought to you by crossroads community hospital it's more than a hospital the state of denial is a drag and a trial. When I bought my cheap insurance, should have known this day would come. Now I've had an accident and I'm feeling quite alone. Called them at least 20 times, but they won't pick up the phone. Without personal service, my policy's kind of worthless. Get to a better state, State Farm. Don't deny yourself to call an agent. Tony Wolf in Mount Vernon, 242-1421. You've heard a lot about the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center, about the cozy fireplaces in its patient areas, and about its numerous healing gardens and soothing nature-inspired artwork. Now that the new hospital is finished, you can finally see them for yourself. Good Samaritan is hosting tours of the new hospital on Saturday, January 5th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday, January 6th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. This isn't your ordinary open house. It's the opportunity to get a behind-the-scenes glimpse of the brand-new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center before it's open to the public in late January. Come see an operating room from the point of view of the surgeon or the new expanded ER and all private patient rooms. Join us at the new facility just off Veterans Memorial Drive in Mount Vernon on January 5th and 6th for complimentary refreshments and to see how we're raising the bar for health care in Southern Illinois. You've never seen a hospital like this before. Visit smgsi.com to learn more. I know you've heard about mortgage rates being all-time lows, but have you done anything about it yet? Hi, I'm Rick Pig, mortgage lender at Community First Bank. There's never been a better time at buying a home or refinancing an existing mortgage. The sooner you act, the more you save. And we'll be there to help you through every step of the way. For more information, visit us at comfirstbank.net or stop by one of our five locations. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Saturday Sports Show, AM 940 WMIX, as well as WMIXSports.com. Need scores? We're going to give them to you later on here in the show from last night. But if you can't wait, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WMIXSports, or go to our website, WMIXSports.com. A game that's going to be on the FM side today, 94.1 FM, SVW at Hamilton County this afternoon from the Foxes Den. Joining us now, Lady Devils head coach Rick Metcalf. And, Coach, an undefeated start. I'm guessing you're in a pretty good mood here on this Saturday morning. Yeah, everything's been going pretty good so far. Uh, we pretty much remain healthy. We had one sick last week, but besides that, everything's going pretty good. Everything's going pretty well for your team. You're rolling to Hamilton County undefeated. Got to win this week against Chester. Your team seems to be gelling, a veteran team, but seems to be gelling and understanding, based off your first year last year, what it takes to be done to become a successful team. Right. You know, we went back and now uh, we looked at our stats through seven games last year and now. Uh, we're doing a whole lot better job as far as taking care of the ball. Um, I don't think it's any big secret. You know, we got two of the better guards in Southern Illinois. They just so happen to be on the same team. But we've actually got 27 less turnovers at this juncture of the season that we did last year through 
that today. Looking at your team, though, the turnover rate obviously down, but the thing I noticed in a couple of games we've done this year already is your defense. And I think not one to five and then through the reserves, everybody comes in. It seems to me that they know playing time means defense, so if you play a good defense, you're going to get a lot more playing time. Well, you know, I, you've known me for a long time. You know, everything's pretty much around the defensive end. Um, you know, my first line every year, you know, playing time should be respected, not expected. You know, and uh, they get graded out every day, you know, on it, um, like in everything else, you know, they do. But, um, yeah, defense has always been a priority. And you're already undefeated on the western side of the conference. A couple of wins are, or one win already. Won the Sparta tournament, beat Woodlawn non-conference. Johnston City as well. I mean, your team rolls in today, maybe catching Hamilton County at an inopportune time after they toughed their first loss the other night. Yeah, that was pretty much, uh, you know, in the girls' uh, side of basketball that was pretty much a shocker i don't think anybody that really follows it that close was expecting that one uh well we sure won't uh wasn't but i've seen hamilton county play i don't say three times maybe four you know over there in their tournament and uh they're definitely in the top three or four teams in southern illinois even with the loss you know i mean sometimes you know that happens every now and then you're going to get upset but yeah they'll still come out uh ready for svw i'm sure they will svw off to a good start Besides today, you go on the road at Trico. You have a big matchup on the 13th against ZRC at home before going across the lake to Benton and then a Wayne City team at Waltonville. I mean, that's a diff, really difficult schedule as you head into Christmas time. Right. From here on out, you know, um, or, you know we've had a couple laps of like five, six days without a game. All of a sudden, you know, like we were talking to the girls, all of a sudden you're playing a game every other day, which, you know, from my standpoint, I actually like that. But, um, you know, you got to go. You got to go to Trico. You know, tough conference matchup. Uh, we know each other. You know, extremely well. Um, you mentioned ZR, uh, probably the most improved team in Southern Illinois. Got a couple guards, uh, Bill and Gunner and uh, Mifflin, averaging 25, 23 points apiece. And then the matchup with Ben, of course, is you know, is a, is a big one in Franklin County. An important thing I think you do with your program, you promote it well between Cesar Blair and Waltonville. You get an opportunity, you did this last year doing it again with Wayne City. You get to play a game at Waltonville. What does that do and how does that help your program as far as numbers and teams and players? Yeah, well, you know, I didn't know what to expect. Of course, you know, I've never done anything like that. You know, it being my first year last year on the girls' side. And, um, it's still really a learning experience, you know, especially when it comes to gym time and, and those kind of things. You know, but I mean, you know, you just got to remember where you're at in the pecking order. You know, the scheme of things. But Waltonville has helped us out, unbelievable. We actually held all of our open gyms up there to help the girls out. You know, they got to come down here, you know, during basketball season. So we thought, okay, we'll return the favor and we'll just go up there for all of our open gyms during the summer. Um, administration's just been flat out awesome. You know, as far as just laying out the red carpet for us. Um, you mentioned, you know, we went over there last year. Didn't know what to expect. You know, I get over there on 11:30 or so. Everything was ready. You know, just like a, a regular boys game, um, it was perfect. You know, so you know we definitely want to keep that up. You know, small schools. That's where you co-op. You know, we need the numbers. You have to get two to three girls a year. You know, and we pretty much have been maintaining that. So that's been pretty good. As we mentioned, a game on WMIX 94.1 FM today. Your team travels to Hamilton County to take on the Lady Foxes. What are some of the things your team's going to have to do today in order to come out with a big road victory and remain undefeated? Well, hopefully they're out of bed by now. <laughs> That's yep. always a, 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 you know, a plus. You know, go out there and not wallow around with them. You know, uh, keep playing the good defense, move the feet, um, and just play our game. You know, I feel like if we play our game, we'll be in pretty good shape. You know, we got the exact same team we had last year. You know, I went back and watched the tape from last year, and uh, Tosh Door. You know, the only girl that we lost, she was in foul trouble for three quarters. She wasn't even on the floor. So we pretty much have the same squad back. Same the squad. We'll have that game today. we have end with our WMAX Sports social media question of the week. Question for you this week is, as we roll to Christmas time, what is the best Christmas gift you have ever received? Chicago Bears winning the championship back in, what was it, 85? Yeah. Okay, there you go. You're all about the Bears right now. Is that because they're winning? Well, yeah, but I, I, I got to throw you guys something different. Right. I know. You all, you always got something up your sleeve. Well, for, lay in the week. I lay in the week. Well, I've heard that. That or Shasta for free, right? <laughs> there you go. All Good right, luck. Coach. We'll see you this afternoon. Good right. luck at that game. Looking forward to broadcasting that this afternoon from Hamilton County. All right. Thanks.
That's Rick Metcalf, head coach of the SVW girls basketball team, and rolling along undefeated, but a tough one today in Hamilton County. And we'll have that for you on WMIX 94.1 FM as well as streamed live audio on WMIXports.com. We need to step out for a break. We'll come back. Jeff Lon and the head coach of the Mount Vernon Lady Rams will join us next. You're listening to Saturday Sports Show, sponsored by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Do you farm or operate an agriculture-based business? Then Community First Bank is for you. Hi, I'm Steve Down, Agribusiness Lending Officer at Community First Bank. With our roots firmly planted in Jefferson County, we offer the stability, strength, and personal attention that you deserve. Community First Bank wants to be your financial partner with customized products for both your personal and farm banking needs. Stop by any of our five convenient Jefferson County locations to see how we can help your business grow. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ida. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit crossroadscommunityhospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Saturday Sports Show here on AM 940 WMIX as well as WMIXSports.com. Remember our social media question posted on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMIXSports. We want to hear from you. What is the best Christmas gift you have ever received? Speaking of a Christmas gift, we get the opportunity to, to interview the head coach of the Mount Vernon Lady Rams, Jeff Lonnen, joins us now. Coach, how are you on this Saturday morning? Uh, we're pr- well, we're good. We're practicing. We just got done with some transition drills, and and now we're heading to shooting drills, and then we're heading to carbon bell, uh, other stuff they do, and then by 11 o'clock we'll be heading back home. Heading to Carbondale. What's going on in no, Carbondale? No, we're, we're working on Carbondale. Working on Carbondale. I got you. Carbondale comes in to Tuesday night to Shagdon Gym. A review last week. Centray, a big win at home on Wednesday night. An odd night to have a high school girls game, it seems. But atmosphere was good. Ran, Lady Rams get a big win at home in the South Seven Conference against Centralia. Yeah, that's a big one for us. I mean, that's a game we've not, you know, we've not been able to get for a few years. So, um you know, uh, we feel really good about that one. We know we have a lot of things we got to work on. We didn't play perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, there were some circumstances in that game that that occurred that that kind of caught us by surprise. Number one was was Haley's, you know, unfortunate departure from the game in the second quarter. So, um, you know, I thought the kids did as good as they could, just trying to get through it and survive and get the win. They did a great job doing that. They did what they had to do and. And uh, they scored a really, really big conference win, and it kind of gives us, you know, a little bit of early command, and you know, um, uh, of the South Seven along with um, with Althoff. So, uh, you know, we're excited about that. Being the excitement, I thought two things the other night. You had to do the same thing twice. Lockhart goes out. Your team had to rally and contain the lead. She comes back in, a little bit uplifting, tweaked the knee a little bit on a play. Had to go back out the rest of the game. It seemed your team not once but twice stepped up and did what they had to do to get that win without Lockhart on the floor. They're tough. I mean, these guys are tough. I mean, they're 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 mentally, and I'm talking about them from a mental standpoint. I think they're um, they're they're very aware that you know this could be their year in the South Seven, and I think that they're you know. They're they're quite focused on on that being one of their goals is winning this conference and you know that would be you know I mean we we talked about it I think at one time maybe a long time back and I'm not sure they really believe that but now I think that we're into the season and they see what we got and they see what they have in, we have in front of us and they see what everybody else has I think that you know it's a little bit tougher team on the floor now mentally because they actually believe that that you know they could actually do this. So uh, that makes a whole lot of difference. When your kids believe, uh, that's half the battle, and sometimes that's hard to get them to uh, to do that. But I think we got them sold on that South Seven thing, um, and uh, I think it shows because you no, know, they're not perfect, and they didn't play perfect the other night. I thought they were real mentally tough down the stretch, especially from the free throw line. I thought that you know we we could have we could have stepped up to that line and just you know shot craps. 
uh, in that fourth quarter, but we were pretty solid. Wow, solid, solid indeed, beating Centralia Wednesday night. And now to the future, you're preparing for Carbondale on Tuesday. Then you have to make a road trip early morning over to Freeburg for a 1 o'clock JV start. And then on the road at Marion on Tuesday is three gettable games for your Lady Rams as you roll into the Mosquito Tournament. Well, they're gettable, but we can't really look ahead more than just one. And right now we're just talking about Carbondale. You know, we have a heck of a dilemma now because, uh, you know, we don't we don't foresee, you know, we don't know about Haley right now. I mean, we know we know that it's 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 been looked at two days in a row now by two or three different trainers. Um, it, it doesn't appear to be your ACL. It doesn't appear to be anything terribly structural or anything of that nature. It, it just what happened. They think is their kneecap just kind of popped out and popped back in whenever she went down, which which happens. I've seen it happen before in football, and it's very painful and it, it kind of mimics a major knee injury. But she's here practicing. You know, she's walking and and she's uh, she's still got a little swelling. So uh, I I don't foresee. Um, her playing a huge role in that game Tuesday night. I don't even know if she'll dress. So if that's the case, we've got to kind of work around that and, uh, and uh, you know, somebody else will have to step up. And, um, you know, I think we've got a couple capable players there that will step into that role and fulfill that need and and uh, hopefully uh, get Carbondale because that's, uh, that's something you don't want to have to do is face another conference opponent when you're trying to win the conference with, without, you know, your, your, full, your, full, your full group. And, uh, uh, not enviable position to be in, but at the same time, I really have a lot of confidence in whoever's going to step in that spot and, and get that done. As a coach and a players, in the game, is it easier to win the game to deal with the fact when a player goes down to go ahead and finish that game than it is to have to sit back and think about it for a few days and to wonder if a player is going to play when you get ready for a game the next week? Well, I think what you're saying... Yeah. Re- rephrase that. Again. Rephrase that. Sure. Here's what I'm saying. Let's do this. In the heat of a game, when a player goes down, yeah. the players sit there and they kind of forget about it because they're in the heat of the moment. Then when things settle down and you got a few days for the next game, is it easier to deal with it in-game when it happens rather than waiting on the next game having to wonder if somebody's going to play or not? Um, it's probably easier to deal with in-game. You know, it's just it, – I will tell you that the other night we had uh, – it was kind of a unique situation because when she went down, she was immediately, you know, evaluated by by Carrie, and, and and you have to understand Carrie has been a trainer here for a long time, and Carrie it knows her stuff. And I've, I've coached football here, you know that. I've coached basketball for several several years. I've coached, you know, just been around other athletes that aren't even mine that that go to her, and I, I very rarely have ever seen her wrong. On, on anything in terms of the knee or anything else for that matter. So, you know, she went over there and uh, and and when when she went down initially and gave her the ACL test and all the you know the major ligament tests and and, and she passed Haley passed all of those tests. Um, and and then when she came back, um, I think the kneecap was probably just something that was causing her so much pain that when I put her back in, she just couldn't quite do it. So you're dealing with uh, you're, you're you're dealing with the dilemma of before you put her back in is yeah the trainer cleared her do I do I need to win this game but I also need my my player for the rest of the year so you're in a really a no win situation if you don't put her back in and she can go and you end up you know choking up the lead and, and you know losing then everybody's going to say well you know she was ready why didn't you put her in and if you do put her in and it doesn't work and everybody wants to yell at you could you put your player back in when she was hurt. And, and you know, so you yeah you're in, you're in a no win situation there, and and I chose to put her back, and 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 uh, she she did a couple good things when she went back, but she just couldn't stay, and, um, and I think you know she helped bridge the gap there in the third quarter and the fourth quarter a little bit for four or five minutes to get us to get us home, but it's you know it's a it's a tough call, and uh, I think now that that it's over, we know that it was, it wasn't anything terribly structural. Or anything like that, I think I made the right decision. I would do it again, you know, in a heartbeat. And um, but the, the, whole, the whole unfortunate thing is, it looks like uh, she may not be with us Tuesday night, but she wasn't going to be with us Tuesday night in, anyway, whether I'd put her back in or not. So it worked out as about as best as it probably could. Speaking of could, best in working out is the holiday tournament pairing some scooter out. You get a toughie out of the gate, you open up with Belleville West. That's kind of a tough draw for a team with one loss. 
I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't. I don't know what we have to do to get a good seed over there, or a decent seed anyway. And I don't even know what the seeds were. We weren't contacted uh, um, about our, at least I wasn't. Now, I should say this because maybe Coach Creel was, but I, I wasn't contacted about our record or, or, or who our common opponents were with anybody or anything like that. Uh, so I don't know how it was seeded. The seeds aren't on the sheet when we get them with the, with the pairings. I know that Nashville got Centralia's JV team. I know that uh, I think in the bottom wasn't it uh, Mascuta that got Carbondale, mm-hmm. um, um, and then you know us at six and one got Belleville West. So I there there's no um, there's no way for me to understand that. Uh, but I'm not going to criticize it. You know we signed up for the tournament. We agreed to play. And, uh, you know, I think when you do that, you take what you get. Uh, but you don't have to like it. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not particularly fond of that draw. Uh, and when I look at what everybody else got. But, you know, you got to go play. And, and um, we'll do that. We'll do the best we can. We, we drew a huge school, a high enrollment school, a 4A um, big school. So uh, are they 4A, by the way? Yes, Andy, they are 4A. Here. Oh, yeah. Before I said that, yeah. So, you know, it's just a deal where – we got to go play, and if, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And, you know, the other thing is they put us in a bracket with Nashville. And, and you know, I would like to obviously get away from them um, mm-hmm. just because we've played them already in the tournament. You know, these that's some, when you go to these tournaments, you like playing people you, that you haven't played before, especially in a second-round game. You know, you want to be set up, and especially if you have a good record and you deserve a high seed. And uh, somehow we just got thrown right into that bracket, and, and I don't uh, don't know, can't explain it, don't know, but uh, we will go play, and I won't complain once I'm there. I'll uh, I'll keep my head up, coach my guys, and um, and we'll do the best we can. And if it works out, and we'll, maybe we can get a couple wins and and uh, and prove that our six and one record deserves a better seat. Well, we'll give you something you can play the handle with. Our WMI Sports okay. Social Media Question of the Week. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. What is your best? Christmas gift you've ever received? Oh, wow. Boy, I've got some, I've had some nice Christmas gifts. You know what I think? You remember uh, back in the day, uh, this may be dating myself, but you remember back in the day when the first video games came out and they, they, they released the Atari? Yes, the Atari 2600, yeah. Well, I don't know if mine was a 2600. Mine might have been like the 100. Yeah, I mean, my, yeah, my, my the 100. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, this wasn't 2.0 or 3.0. This was the original yeah. Atari. The black and orange box? Yes, and it had the cassettes, yeah. like the 8-tracks. that you like, yeah. looked like little 8-track cassettes you plugged in there. Right. And they had like a Pong. I think you had like three games. You had yeah. like Pong, Asteroids. Combat. And maybe Combat. Yeah, they called yeah. it Combat. I think, was there Space Invaders, maybe? Space or? Invaders, Pitfall, Donkey yes. Kong. Yes, that probably would be... At this point in time, if I had to think back, I was most excited about the Atari. I got news for you. Yeah. You know somebody that has a box that still works. You know? Uh, me. Really? I have that Atari, and it still works. Last time I plugged hey. it in and ran it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that might have to get that out, that out one baby. time. You better go get some money out of that. You need to check it out on eBay. I know, but I hate to give that up because, boy, once in a while you just want to bust combat and pitfall out and playing. And did you on pitfall? Did you like to go backwards in the game instead of forwards? Because I always went backwards running through backwards. the jungle. No, absolutely backwards. There's yes. no other way to do it. Hey, we'll let I coach. Did. We'll let you get back to it. We'll hook up uh, the Atari I got some uh, down the road, and we'll see. They got if... Sony Betamax at home too. Well, and then there was ColecoVision. Remember, ColecoVision came out with a number pad. Yes. Right. Yep. That evolved. Of course, that was the uh, evolved from the Apple IIc Oregon Trail on the green screen. That was always classic too. <laughs> You're know. better at this than I am. I can see. Well, I mean, but, you know, I, I, that was in school. That was the game of yeah. choice. But it wasn't wasn't life good without cell phones and and, and you know the computer stuff? I mean, we didn't know any better. So, no, because I mean, good because we yeah. went outside and found things to do and invented games. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Speak, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I've got the Atari at home. We'll have to break it out one day. Let's do it. Okay. Hey, let's do this. We'll see you next week. A game against Carbonell. We'll let you get back to practice, but thanks for joining us today on the show. All right, Danny. Thanks a lot. Thank have, you. have a good day. You too. That's Jeff Lana, head coach of the Mount Vernon Lady Rams. Off to a great start. Carbondell this week at home. That game will be on AM 940 WMIX as well as live video with Jeff Crow in the Crow's Nest at WMIXSports.com. We'll take a break, come back, get some scores. 
We'll talk about our social media question of the week, give our answers as well. You're listening to the Saturday Sports Show, sponsored by Crossroads Community Hospitals, more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. How does Dale's Harley-Davidson in Mount Vernon stay the longest-running Harley dealer in Southern Illinois? How about free pickup and delivery and being the home of the $29.95 oil change? Plus, get financing as low as 1.5 APR, along with the best selection of certified pre-owned Harley-Davidsons. So now you know how Dale's Harley-Davidson stays number one. Dale's Harley-Davidson, open every day but Wednesday, just off of I-57 in Mount Vernon. Visit dales-hd.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. Are we ready? Back here at Saturday Sports Show. We've gotten off track here. Here with the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. Chris Hugo signed in at the Dallas Clark Fathead. Jeff Crow, your response. Wow, I've been trying to think about this. Um, tell you what, come back to me because I'm still come back, Mike Richardson. What do you got? Well, no, yeah, and that, that's another thing you've been thinking. I mean, you know, I, I like to put the family part in that as well. The the quality time at that time because mm-hmm. uh, it, it is when you're coaching, broadcasting different things. Mm-hmm. You try to you know try to find a little bit of time, but but I think I was about 12 years old. I got the big red bicycle one time, mm. the headlight and the horn, the whole bit. So Pee Wee Herman, yeah, that really? Was, oh, that's not fair. That was uh, that Where was a shocker. There? That yeah. was a shocker, and uh, yeah, out in the country, that was uh, fun. Back then, you know, you could just drive, ride it anywhere and everywhere. So uh, yeah, good times uh, that Christmas morning for sure. Jeff Crow, you're on the spotlight. Here it is. Your okay. Christmas gift. Okay, I know it changing sound, tires doesn't sound exciting. It has to deal with cars, though. The uh, Matchbox back when they had the track, mm-hmm. you used to set up, and you could have drag races or whatever. Yeah, in the loops. Yeah, that was uh, that one. And uh, I, I got another one to add in. Yeah, my very first H O A F X slot car track. I got you. I still got my. I still have my slot cars too. You know, and that's you know Jeff Lawn and brought that up about the Atari. It's I mean you had the basic games. Combat came with it, and then you had to buy the game. You had Donkey Kong, Pitfall, Cubert, um, Frogger. Oh my gosh, Space Invaders. Dun, dun, dun. I mean that was all the time. There was another game, is like Haunted House or something. That was always, you know, with, you know, that was an interesting game to play. That whole deal, that was the beginning of it all. Was the Atari, and you'd stick the cassette in like an eight-track tape, mm-hmm. and you click it on, and you could play, and all this other stuff. You know, I mean, that was that was it. Yeah, exactly. And I, like I said, it's a game. It's something that you never. The hours we just talked about. The hours you sat back and played Pong. Right. I mean, all you have break is... Breakout. Remember Breakout? Yeah. You had a bar, a ball, and breaking out cubes. Yeah. And yes. it's, it was fun. Still have one of those. Last time I knew it worked. I mean, it, it's still... I mean, pole position was another one. Get the joystick and go. And then you had you had the joystick, and you got a set of paddles. Mm-hmm. So you had to go buy an out and buy another joystick if you want to play a game with your buddies like Combat. But you had the paddle you could use for yeah. Breakout and things like that. I mean, Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's going to be an Atari game night one someplace, I can tell already. Oh, yeah, got to break them out. Right. Speaking of breaking it out, we got to break out a scoreboard. You can find all the scores from last night located on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Sports, as well as on our website, World Wide Web, www.wmixsports.com. We'll go through the scores one more time. 
And if not, if you miss them or want to see them again, we told you where to go look for them. The scores from last night on FM last night here, Altoff beat Mount Vernon on the, at home, 44-36. Carbondale over Marion, 72-69. And Cahokia beat Centralia, 63-46. A game on the AM here last night, Modern Day beat Woodlawn, 41-25 at the SIU Arena. Waltonville over North Clay, 61-55. Thompsonville over Weber, 51-28. Christopher over Wayne City, 55 36. Black Diamonds, the R over Elvarado, 65-50. Chester over SV, 65-41. Hamilton County over Vienna, 81-68. Carmi over JC, 65-53. El Dorado over Fairfield, 74-61. River to River, Ohio. Harrisburg over Murphy, 74-43. Benton over Heron in overtime, 44-42 at home. Massac beat Frankfurt on the road, 74-52. Mississippi Division, Carterville, come from behind, beat Pinckneyville at home, 41-33. Ducoin beats AJ, 56-47. And Nashville beats Sparta, 48-40. Jeff Mandrell gets his 300th win at Meridian High School, beating his brother, 91-80. Egyptian last night, the Battle of the Mandrell Coaching Brothers. Century over Dongola, 86-61. And Shawnee over Joppa, 85-45. Vincennes, Indiana, got Mount Carmel last night, 71-53. Robinson got Cumberland, 74-24. The Apollo Conference, Charleston over Salem, the close one, 75-68. Effingham beat Mattoon, 53-39. And Mount Zion beat Paris, 59-52. Little Illini, Olney over Red Hill, 48-40. Good win for Mount Rob Flanagan. Floor over Marshall, 48-45. Newton over Edwards County, 61-40. Altamont. Beat South Central last night, 56-42. In the Battle of Saints, St. Anthony beat St. Elmo, 55-44. A game at the arena last night before Woodlawn, Oakville beat Trico, 48-28. The big schools to our west, Edwardsville over Belleville West, 81-66. West now, that's their first loss. Beast beat East St. Louis by 1, 67-66. Alton beat Granite City, 52-43. Collinsville Beat O'Fallon 59-54. In the Mississippi Valley, Civic Memorial over Jerseyville 55-44. Waterloo comes to Shagnon Gymnasium next Saturday night. Beat Triad 43-34. Highland over Mascuda 39-21. All those scores, as I said, located at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. We also have them on our website at www.wmixsports.com. How many breaks do I have left? One? None? None? I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Well, that's a first. Just all you got to do now is just... Uh, Chit-chat and talk? Yeah, exactly. You know. Um, Saluki Shootout. That's going on today, all day, at the SIU Arena. Of course, Woodlawn was part of day one last night. Got some pictures and some stuff up on content up on our Facebook page from last night. What we could gather and grab as we were down at the SIU Arena and everything else. We also, on our website, will have archive highlights and everything of the Rams game last night and the Woodlawn game as well. Today at the SIU Arena, second annual Saluki Shootout game underway already. Marion and Meridian girls playing at 9 a.m. They'll clear the arena out, and at noon, SIU plays Marshall in women's basketball. You'll have to clear out again and come back in at 2.30. That's when the string of games start. 2.30, Carbondale, Alton, Marquette, and girls. 4 o'clock, one that a lot of people are looking forward to and one a Goreville, Gallatin County. Those two teams will have to play each other to get out of the sectional to get to back to SIU once postseason starts if they so to get that far. Carbondale plays Heron at 5.30. Carbondale with a big win last night over Marion on the road, and Heron loses a big lead at Benton, so that'll be interesting teams of two teams going different directions. Marion plays Murfreesboro at 7. Mar- Marion Loses a tough one at home to Carbondale, and then Murphy gets drilled at Harrisburg. Interesting to see how those teams come out tonight. And then a game that everybody's looking forward to, which was not originally on the schedule but was changed, Harrisburg will play Alton Marquette. Marquette bumped from 2A to 3A, so Harrisburg will play Alton Marquette. That'll be at 8.30. Whole slate of games there at SIU at the arena in the second annual Slukey Shootout. And we thank everyone at SIU last night and this week for being so hospitable, helping out with everything from where we're going to sit, where we're going to set up, scoring stats before, during, and after, all kinds of things at the Slukey Shootout. We appreciate that as well. Woo, we still want to hear from you on our Facebook, our WMI Sports social media question of the week, facebook.com slash WMI Sports. We've already posted and talked about our answers. What is the best Christmas gift you have ever received? We're waiting on yours. That's a question anybody can answer. Two weeks away, was it two weeks? Three weeks away from the big day on Tuesday. 
And then that heavy slate of basketball games or that four-day stretch from Wednesday to Saturday of every holiday tournament you can think of. And as we draw closer the next couple of weeks, we'll preview. We know the Mosquito Girls pairings are out. We know the Duster Thomas Hoops Classic pairings are out, at least for the first day. And then it becomes pool play versus who based on who you win, lose, and not to. We'll talk about those over the next two weeks. Over the next week here, of course, WMIX, we still have one more game this week. Today, the SVW Lady Devils will travel to Hamilton County. That will be a 1 p.m. JV start. It'll be on WMIX 94.1 FM, the varsity will, so expect pregame about 220, 2.15, 2.20, 2.25 this afternoon. Lady Foxes host Lady Devils on WMIX 94.1 FM as well as all live audio streaming on WMIXsports.com. Next week is a busy, busy, busy schedule. Monday night, Weber Township hosts North Clay and girls basketball at Weber Township High School. We'll be on the air probably about 720. We'll be on WMIX-FM 94.1 as well as live video of that game. WMIXsports.com. Tuesday night, we do the split again like we did last night. On the AM, Mount Vernon Lady Rams will host Carbondale. It'll be on AM 940 with live video at WMIXsports.com. I will be with Mike Richardson at Waltonville. The Waltonville Spartans host Carlisle. That game will be on 94.1 FM, WMIX. JV starts at 6.15. So expect a pregame about 7.25 or so. Wednesday night. Make the trek to Galatia as the Woodlawn Lady Cardinals travel to Galatia. That game on FM Wednesday night as the pregame be at 6, one game at Galatia. From what we know, if that changes, we'll get it to you out on our social media. On Thursday night, to a doubleheader. We always look forward to going to Wayne City. Can't wait to get there to the 59th Annual Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. We will do two games, a 7 o'clock game with ZR versus Weber Township pregame at 645. We'll stay on the air all the way through for the Potoka wayne City game at 830. Both games you can hear on WMIX 94.1 FM as well as live audio on WMIXsports.com. Friday evening, it'll be a split again on the FM. Cahokia, undefeated in conference play, undefeated on the season. We'll head into Mount Vernon on Friday night to play the Rams, that game on FM. 94.1 94.1 FM, as well as live video on WMXSports.com. Mike Richardson and I will head to Woodlawn as the Waltonville Spartans come to town in the Battle of West Jefferson County. Looking forward to that being part of conference play once again. That'll be on the AM 940 with live audio streaming on WMXSports.com. Next Saturday, it's a doubleheader of Rams and Lady Rams basketball. First in the afternoon. Mount Vernon will be at Freeburg. The JV begins at 1. We'll be on the air about 2.20 or so, whatever, with the pregame. Mount Vernon at Freeburg. That's a TBA. If you were wondering, that's not one of our stations. That's TBA. So we've got that game. We'll get back to you on that, what side we're going to put it on. Then that night, Mount Vernon hosts Waterloo and head coach C.J. Cruiser. That game on FM 94.1 as well as live video on WMIXSports.com. So next week on both our stations, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games next week. We're covering, now get this, Mount Vernon Boys, Woodlawn Boys, Waltonville Boys, Wayne City Boys, Weber Boys. If you count the Lady Devils today, along with Weber Township, Woodlawn, and Mount Vernon, that's nine of our teams we'll have on next week that we like to get out and cover. It's a pretty nice little lineup that we get out and cover every every day, every night, try to anyway. That's something great about uh, this WMIX and all the sports crew and every you know everybody involved that you're know, able to uh, even though the team has to split up. Right. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do to be able to cover all these uh, all those great sports in Jefferson County and the surrounding area. And uh, I tell you what, it's just a sign of this is the best time of the year. Basketball going strong uh, because. And then you got the, like I said, you got the holiday tournaments coming up. But uh, how else would you rather spend your time but going to watch high school basketball? And that's what's going to be happening. Lots of high school basketball going on. Of course, you can find out the schedule. We'll post them with money at plenty of times on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. We'll have them on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. And we have a schedule of games you can see. If you go to WMIXSports.com, we have a schedule. You can click on that and see where we're going to be at, what we're going to be broadcasting. We also have a scoreboard there that's arranged by date. 
So if you want to go back and you say, hey, I know there was a team, there was a game that was played on Thursday, December 6th. I need to go back and find that score. Go there. We have them by date, all arranged nice and neatly. We also have archives of audio and video of the games that we do. We also have highlights of games that we do with video. So adding on as we go along on the World Wide Web as well as social media. We have to thank all of our guests this morning that were on the show. Of course, Mount Vernon Rams head coach Scott Gamber. We also had on Dave Wagner, Mount Vernon Rams bowling coach, of course, as the Rams will host the South 7 Conference meet this morning starting at 11 out at New Bowl Lanes. If you haven't seen a bowling match, go out there and support the Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams. They'll have a great tournament today, the South 7 meet out there. Look forward to seeing that, people out there cheering them on. Then, of course, we had Wade Thomas, the head coach of the Johnston City Indians boys basketball team. Then we had Mike Denault back in the area coaching at Trico now, leading the Pioneers out to a 5-1 start in their season. Russ Gerlock was on at 9-10 today to talk about the 59th annual Wayne City Holiday Tournament. That will go on today and Monday through Saturday next week. We'll post the event times and game schedules for that each day at our different various sites that we've told you about many times. Rick Metcalf, head coach of the SV Devil, Lady Devils, joined us. And then, of course, Jeff Lonnen joined us, head coach of the Lady Rams. Thanks to all of our guests who were on this morning to talk about their teams, talk about their schedules, talk about our WMIX social media question of the week. And that was a great two hours that went by so quickly. Of course, a reminder, today, basketball once again on the FM. The Lady Devils of SVW, Cesar Valer Waltonville, travels to Hamilton County. The Lady Devils undefeated. Hamilton County only one loss. That was last Thursday night, this past Thursday, to El Dorado in conference play. So an interesting battle of two teams playing very well. Was expecting undefeated season, but that is why... They call it high school basketball. You never know what to expect. Jeff Crow, final thought before we buzz on out of here. If you uh, can't find a basketball game, you're not looking hard enough. Or if you can't go to one, tune in right here to AM 940 or FM 94.1 WMIX. I bet you. We got scores and all that. Again, we gave scores. You know where we're at. On the road, we cover those teams in this area as best we can, dividing it up. It has been a great day. All our guests, we thank once again for Mike Richardson, for Chris Hugo, for Jeff Crow. I'm Danny Zerwinski as we sign off here on this second, actually first Saturday now in December. Second Saturday because it's the 8th. Yeah, I can do math. Remember our social media question, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. We want to hear from you. Follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. You can chit-chat with us. and We put all kinds of tweets on daily from all levels of the world of sports. For everybody out there, thanks for listening. Have a good Saturday. NBC News starts now.